So if you haven't figured it out yet by watching the channel, I love themed products so much. And today is, you know, the second of a themed product line that we are working on. But before I tell you what that is, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the themed things. Ha! See? I don't say the same thing every time. None of this is scripted. I don't... I'm not that good. So anyway, today we are following up on yesterday's unicorn soap by making a unicorn bath bomb. But not just any kind of bath bomb. It's a cupcake bath bomb with a bubble bar frosted top, which is awesome, right? So you get your foam, with the bubbles and your fizz with the bath bomb in the same adorable little package that's gonna look like a freaking unicorn. Now I didn't make these, I made the soaps, the unicorn soaps from yesterday. She's following up the, with the unicorn bath bombs today. And in the video, we will talk about how to make a good bubble bar recipe that is pipeable. So we'll definitely get into that right now with the whole staged process of making the unicorn bath bomb things. Okay, so today we are making the unicorn cupcake bath bombs, which we call bubble bombs, in the shop. And it's a pretty stock standard batch, right? You've got your two cups of baking soda, half cup cornstarch, one tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of oil. We use sunflower oil, and one tablespoon of the scent blend. This is a spicy pineapple to match the blend of yesterday's soap, which is super cool. And you're gonna mix all of that up, and we're not putting any color in the bottom, right? Because we want it to sort of match the uh, soap that was made yesterday. So we are doing that. And so no color is going to go into this. We're just going to mix up all the clumps and bumps and make sure that the liquid is really fully incorporated throughout the entire batch of the bath bomb powder, really, before we put in the citric acid. Now the citric acid going in last, again, I have said this before, I will say this again. This is the biggest pro tip any bath bomb maker can give you. And it's also the pro tip that no bath bomb maker ever gives you. They don't like telling people this and you know because then you'll just go and make your own but you hear watching a video about how to you know make a cupcake bath bomb chances are you might be looking to make your own anyway so yeah biggest pro tip put the citric acid in last right there after all of your colors and your oils and everything else has been mixed in now with this uh, particular recipe or this particular you know design rather we're not doing the spherical molds right so you aren't getting out the little circular mold thingies and doing the packing and honestly I find that to be a bigger pain than the the spheres because these with molds like this with the silicone molds they actually have to set up overnight in the mold themselves before you can get them out and that's stupid and I don't ever have enough time for that and then also it becomes an issue with you know, I never have enough molds, right? So I think for these cupcakes, for example, I think I only have 48 of these silicone molds. So four dozen of these silicone molds in the shop, which means we can effectively, we can essentially do one type of cupcake bath bomb a day. And that sucks and is stupid. And so, yeah, that's another reason why I hate silicone molds. Um, but for the, you know, the another reason why I don't really like them is because there's a lot of padding and making sure everything is nice and firm and whatever in there. It takes a whole lot longer to fill one of these than, 
it does to you know make a batch of you know bath bombs just you know the the circular ones so it's a little bit more tedious but it's okay because the bubble bombs are super duper cute when it's all said and done and that reminds me I need to get more cupcake molds because we have a new line of bath bomb of bubble bombs coming out and I need some cupcake liners to put them in so they can be all super cute. This particular one is not going to be put into a liner. You can just use the cupcake liner and use like a muffin tin or cupcake tin or whatever to stabilize the, the sides. You can do that too. For this particular batch though, we wanted the bottom portion, the cake portion exposed. So we are going to not use a cupcake liner for this and they will be just, you know, out so you can see the bottom and yeah, it's a thing. So with this, again, once these are all put into the molds there, they're going to have to set up overnight before we can remove them. Um, they need to, all the water needs to start finding all of its little you know, pieces to bind to so it can get really hard before you take them out of the silicone mold. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a fragile bomb and nine times out of 10, I end up breaking or cracking the bath bomb if I take it out too early. So that's obviously not fun. So yeah, we will uh, be doing this and they'll set up overnight. And then while they are setting up, this is Georgia May doing the thing, by the way. Georgia May will be finishing up the eyes that are going to go on top because again this is a bubble bomb so this is a bottom part bath bomb top part bubble bath and that's awesome and pay attention during the bubble bomb portion of this because i am going to give you a recipe for a pipeable bubble bomb which will blow your mind because it's a minimal minimal amounts of cream of tartar which is good because that is a crazy expensive addition to bubble bar recipes and minimal amounts of uh, slsa also good because SLSA is also pretty darn pricey. Now those guys are ready to go and be just set to the side so they can firm up overnight and again while they are firming up and doing the thing Georgia May is going to finish the eyes that will go on the bubble bomb frosting portion to sort of finish out the that was cute <laughs> to sort of finish out the look of the unicorn bubble bomb. Now she's using soap dough for these and I really like them they're super duper cute and so that's what she's mimicking right there the little eyeballs or the little eyes yep um, but I think after I saw these you know fully done I decided that the black ended up being too I don't know too contrasting I guess because we have a lot of pastels going on and we didn't um, do anything as far as putting a mica line into the eyes on the soap and so after I saw these fully made, I went ahead and took some mica mixed with some alcohol and some glycerin and colored in the eyes so they weren't as black. So now they are more of a kind of muted grayish, more like that really, but with some sparkles on them because, you know, sparkles are awesome. And so is that cute little eyeball or eye. I just like saying eyeball. It's obviously not an eye. It's like a it's a, or it's obviously not an eye bile, it's like a squinty eye thing. Yeah, but that is the process behind making the uh, the eyes. That is a soap dough that then gets molded and that sets up overnight too. So by tomorrow, they will be firm enough to actually put into the bubble bar frosting that will, you know, finish all of this out without, you know, damaging the eyes. And I love how meticulous she is with all these things. I'm going to create the perfect little curve in the eye. She's she's so good. She's so good at all of the things. And yeah, so there are the cutie little eyes. That's that's adorable. Super cute. Good job, Georgia May. Now we are ready to move on to day two where we can do the frosting. Okay, so it's time to frost these beauties, and now, I said I was going to give you the recipe, and I totally am. Uh, tomorrow we are doing a... What are you doing there? Oh, cool. So she's painting the inside of the bag with uh, mica that's probably mixed with rubbing alcohol and maybe a little bit of glycerin, although it's pretty run runny, so it might just be rubbing alcohol. 
and it looks like she's painting it to create some swirls in the bath bomb top, in the bubble bath top itself, which is a very cool idea. That's a nice way to do it instead of actually doing three or four different colors of the actual bath bomb or the bubble bath, you know, stuff. You can just paint the inside of your bag, which I love. So that's what George May is doing right now with that. Now, again, tomorrow we are going to be doing a full bubble bar recipe video, right? So the solid bubble bath and the way that we do it, we have our smarty suds and you know, we're going to show you that process, but making a solid bubble bath is pretty different from making a pipeable bubble bath frosting, right? And obviously, cause you're going to want to be wanting to put in more, um, liquid ingredients to your pipeable version. So it can look like, you know, cool cream cheese frosting, which is totally what that looks like right now. Now, so the recipe that we use for this is as follows. We have 18 ounces of baking soda that goes into that, along with three tablespoons of kaolin clay. The kaolin clay is going to be the stabilizer to keep everything from weeping. And two ounces of SLSA. So remember, I said SLSA, it's super expensive and usually it requires a lot in a bubble bar recipe. Just two ounces in this guy, as well as two teaspoons of cream of tartar. So also cool there too. You were good cost savings with that, which is awesome. And those are all the dry ingredients that go in first. And then you put together um, 1.5 ounces of cocoa butter, 0.5 ounces of poly 80, 0.5 ounces of whatever scent blend you're using, two ounces of cocoa betaine, 0.5 ounces of a lightweight oil. We usually use grapeseed for that. And then one to three tablespoons of witch hazel, which is sort of drizzled into the mix as we, um, as you whip everything up. Now, all of those ingredients, with the exception of the witch hazel, they all go in after the cocoa butter has been melted down, and then you turn on your mixer and come back tomorrow so you can see the actual process if you have any questions, and I'll link back to this video tomorrow after tomorrow's video is released. But that um, process, that is so cute. Oh my gosh, she did so good. It was such a good job, good call with the painting the, the sides of the bag too. And I am curious to see how many of those end up with the painted sides. I'm hoping all of them, but you know, you never know. Now with the, uh, oh yeah, put the eyes on. <laughs> story of my life, George May, story of my life, always fumbling things. But yeah, with the, uh, the, the bubble bar frosting, right? Again, you want it to be the consistency of about a cream cheese frosting. So you want it to be able to pipe it easily, really. And so once everything has been mixed in, you have your dry ingredients, then you put your liquid ingredients in and it's starting to form kind of, you know, big clumps, a couple big balls of, and it's looking smoother, of the bubble bar stuff. You then keep the stand mixer going and you drizzle in up to three tablespoons of witch hazel to loosen up the batter enough to pipe it, which is, you know, cool. And so that's what Georgia May did that she did not show you. And I just gave you the recipe that we use for that. So cute. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. And so what you get with this, because you have the SLSA um, and the Coco Betaine, you have two different bubblers, essentially. And they are delightful. And they create a really big bubble that's, you know, cool. And so this becomes an awesome multi-use product, right? So while the tub is filling, you take the frosted part off and you crumble it under the running water and then you agitate the water that's in the tub, you know, get, get your arm workout going on. And uh, then you have these big epic bubbles that are awesome and very skin loving. It's very gentle. All these surfactants that are used are very gentle for bubble bars. And we've talked about the different surfactants and whatnot um, when we made the shampoo bars and the conditioner bars, right? And so not all surfactants are created equal. And do keep that in mind because SLS and SLSA can actually be easily interchanged, but SLS is a wildly different product than SLSA. And so I would stick with SLSA in these, even though it's tempting to go SLS because it's way cheaper, but no, do, do SLSA. You don't want anybody with, you know, sensitive skin having any sort of irritations after using your product. So if you're go if you have to do surfactants in your, in your life, go with the the best one that you can possibly get and for these purposes the SLSA which contributes to the bubbling is going to be better than SLS now so again you you know drop in your your or you break up your bubble bar and get the big bubbles going and then when you're ready to get into the tub 
you put the cake portion in and it does its fizzy fizz thing and so you have again the best of both worlds you have your foam and your fizz in the same cute little package and those are actually very cute little packages but you see what I mean with the uh, the, the sort of natural colored eyes there on the unicorn soap versus the very dark black eyes on top of a white frosting for the unicorn cupcakes. I decided that it was too stark of a contrast and so I went in and just sort of painted some micas onto them to make it less you know dark essentially and uh, more shimmery more unicorn-esque and ended up looking very good not that these didn't look good anyway they're very cute they're absolutely amazing but you know it was just dealers preference at that point so they are slightly changed but not much and that is a day 118 the unicorn bubble bombs look got your foam got your fizz got your spicy pineapple matches the soap it is the unicorn bath bombs aren't they so cute now I love a good cupcake bath bomb because again you get your bath bomb but you also get your bubble bath so it's the best of both worlds and for me that's a slam dunk and this one is so cute especially when paired with the unicorn soap from yesterday so I decided to go ahead and throw a lip balm in there and create a gift set out of these so if you are interested in the unicorn soap bomb lip balm gift set you can totally find it on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, I am there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And yeah, you should also, before you leave, subscribe to the channel because we do this every day, like literally every day, as the name 365 Days of Soap might suggest. And we really appreciate, you know, every time we get a new sub and, you know, teaching you the things and interacting with the new suds or family like we do the old Sudzer family. So yeah, again, hit subscribe, come join us, be along for the wild soapy ride. It's a fun one. Uh, but for me, that actually does it for today and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.